Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the EcoStructure Machine Expert HPAC. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video, what we're going to see are the timers, function blocks that we have in the software. So, let's go to the presentation. So, in the software, we have three, if I'm wrong, three different timers. Okay, so you can see here, over here. Oops, let's pull it. So, let me just put the pen. We have... Uh, T off, T on, and TP. Okay, and this one pulls. I'm going to show you later what it does. But in order to access to the timers, we just need to go to the library tree, access to the basic folder, and then inside we have the timers. And here, just drag and drop into your code. It's much easier, for example, to drag and drop it into the code if you use the ladder or FPD. So you just drag and drop, and then you can see a pop up message saying, you need to name this uh, function because it requires an instance. So as soon as you drag and drop it into the code, you should be able to see a pop-up asking you to name an instance for the function block that you're going to use. So as you can see here on the top, each of these timer has an um, instance. We also have the possibility to add an enable input and enable output. So in case you want to cascade uh, the activation, you can do it. For the structure of text, it's a little bit different, okay? What I recommend you to you is to drag and drop into the local variables, okay? And then drag and drop it, that name, into the code. And then you can type the parentheses to see all the different inputs and outputs, okay? As I mentioned in the video about the language of DST, in order to uh, define a variable into the... Um, input of the function block just need to use this the column and the equal and then if you want to use um, the output is equal and then this symbol okay now another possibility to use the output is to use the name of the instance okay and then use the dot to have access to the output okay that would be one way but I'm going to show you so what these three um, timers does so the tion retardo la conexión in spanish um, so basically i have the input over here as you can see input pt and q so the input is going to be the signal that you have so as soon as this signal is in true okay you can see here this is the actual time it will start increasing until it reach the preset, which is this PT already configured. As soon as it reaches the PT, the output, the Q, I don't know why it's O, the Q, it will be active, okay? And it will be active as long as this one is in true. As soon as it goes to false, it just disconnects, okay? Now the situation could be that I activate the input, but what happened? It doesn't reach the PT. Is lower so in that case there is no activation of the queue okay and then if I activate again and it reaches the value PT okay as you can see here the PT value it will activate the output okay simple as that this is the TO so if you want to turn on for example a fan and uh, for example you have the activation of the secret breaker you have the return for that um, no, so we can go. Let's see. Imagine that you have a push button or a switch, probably a switch, and you activate the switch, and then you want, for example, that the lights of the pilot goes on, but you just need to wait, I don't know, five seconds until the fan turns on, then you can use this over here. And then here we have, this is uh, T off, retardo la desconexión. So basically, as soon as this one is on, okay, the output will be activated, okay, which is this one, T off, okay. So as soon as this one is activated, the output will be, okay, and as soon as the input goes down, okay, it just activate the timer, okay, activate the timer for this one to be disconnected. Okay, as soon as it reaches the PT, which is the PT value. 
okay this is how it works so this is the pt value as you can see it's reached the value pt and it just stand there okay now uh, in this particular case okay it goes off and off this is the actual value just stay in there and now imagine the situation i put this um i put the input in uh input in true okay and then the output will be in immediately in true now here i just download um put it down the value so you can see over here so the timer start counting but the timer never reaches the value of pt so in this case the output doesn't go down no it just keep on because in this case i activate the input once again okay but when i disconnect and the value just reach the pt it just go off basically that is how it works okay now the tp what it does um uh, just remember so i activate the input okay which you can see i receive one signal the output but it will be on the time that i have already defined okay this is the the pulse so as soon as i have the input activated it will send a pulse of the duration that it wants and here in this case you can see even if the input is in true it doesn't activate nothing over here nothing is zero it just states on the time that it wants to specify on the pt now in this particular case i sent one in true okay it activates and it doesn't matter what i have here it will start counting this part okay it's not sending two pulses all together. No, it just sent one. Okay, that's the important thing here. And here is the same situation I had before. Now, uh, let me see here, I'll just move myself. So, one thing that it can happen is that all these function blocks uh, uses uh, the variable as double int and it requires um, milliseconds okay so if you are familiar with milliseconds okay you can have it on the hmi and put the value in milliseconds which is good but sometimes we don't want that okay we just want to put the value in seconds or in minutes and it's gonna be uh it's not a problem but it's gonna cause more complicated thing to ask for the operator so it's much better to make some kind of logic in order to have the seconds and then make the calculation to have milliseconds on the input of the timer so as you can see is on sign double int the input that i have for the pt so if i want three seconds i just need to add three thousand because it's in milliseconds now we can do this kind of logic in order to access from seconds and to get the milliseconds so basically i put this in a hmi or the bear display and I multiply this by the constant in this case going to be 1000 so i get the 3000 over here so i go the 3k over here that's going to be the three milliseconds and i can keep working okay so this is one thing that you can do in your code so the customer doesn't need to access the on milliseconds just use the seconds so uh could uh PRU FED to use any other time or function blocks, create the value of coin for the block option, use the oscilloscope and show blink. Okay, so I have done this function block just to create a square signal and you can see the behavior. But I'm going to show you that I'm using here the TP. So you create pulses, okay, the length that you want, and this is the function block pulse. Okay, just create pulses for the uh, it just create pulses and the other one just create a pulse of the duration that you want so if we combine all these we can generate a square signal okay with different um with different duty cycle in a way okay this is what we one way to do it so 
let's go to the software and add new block top let's use the theon drag and drop okay instance theon here i'm going to use uh, 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 let's see switch so activate the switch uh let's use target blocks operator this line is smooth this is what i want to show you here this is the situation that i want to show you so i have um lights I'm going to activate the lights but i want the fun to be activated and after three seconds so here what we can do is to create a variable so put it in uh, time seconds and i'm going to multiply this um multiply here to put myself right here multiply multiply by a constant it's going to be 1000 and here the, I'm going to show the actual time here the sign double hit something like this so if we simulate this okay so here i'm going to specify these three seconds okay because i'm going to have over here the three thousand is going to be three seconds and we can see how much this is increased so as soon as i put this in true this one will be on but the fun will turn on in three seconds so set you can see this increasing when it reach it's turn on okay this is how you can make it work now what I have done here is this kind of blink variable. So if we use the oscilloscope, I can show you how it works. Uh, out, where is the out? So. Um, I'm going to specify here. I don't remember if I, I believe everything is in milliseconds. So uh, what I'm going to do is to specify, I don't know, um, three seconds in mm, true and then another three seconds uh, low and high. So and then I'm going to activate. Here you can see there's going to be three seconds. It's going to be another three seconds. It just generates a square signal. I have also the possibility to extend this to find seconds in true and the other one in false the three seconds. So in order to see this properly, all we can do is to put this in this way. Uh, let's see if I maximize this part. So the first point is going to be the three seconds. So you can see here they have three seconds maybe it's just a definition of mine and the period is going to be six seconds six seconds and then here if we move this it's going to be the true value in five five seconds so if we access to this we should be able to see that the logic how it works and what is done here this is just an example if i need to do this i probably use the structure text but in this case just a uh, visual way to to show the things so i calculate 
the complete period of the signal and then based on the period I put this into the pulse function block that needs um, a range or not the unit is 0 0.1 seconds okay that's why I make this calculation over here to get the pulse so the pulse what is going to give me if pulse is every um, every eight uh, eight seconds it's going to give me a pulse so I can specify this signal to send the true value okay so it's waiting for the for the period and then I send on the period the value for the uh, for the true or at least this is how I think it's going to work and it's doing that um, so this is how you can work with the uh, with this combination of things okay of the timer in this particular case the timer shows you the timer the on and I show you how to make a square signal uh, with a different duty cycle. I believe this is it. Yes. So these are the timers that we have on the softwares along with the pools and the TP on the software. So you can create your own logic. You, you saw how I done the, the um, like the blink that we have in all the software. Uh, so um, thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one. Thank you.